the American justice system currently appears to be systemically broken. We do a lot of David and Goliath type cases. We're a nation of laws, or at least we're supposed to be. We're going to have to test the proofs that underlie this order, which haven't been done. I'm trying to fight for justice in the American way. I've spent 30 years in the police department. I've seen a lot. You know, what's being said to you today and what you're reading, if it wasn't true 10 years ago, then you have to question that. How in the hell did we get here and where the hell are we going? Welcome to the Two Average Joes podcast. This is Robert Baker, Joey, formerly known as. And this is Joseph B. St. John. But everybody calls me Joe and nobody has ever called me Joseph B. Except one person. I'm not going to mention who that was. Robert Joey Baker. Joe. Man about town. Legend. Myth. The yeah. whole works. In my own mind. It's the only way we go. Tell me why you're here for two average days. Give me, give me like a brief overview. Let's explain to me why you're here. What's your motivation? Why did you buy this incredibly large building? This building is large. Well... We'll go into how you and I got together when we were eight years old, but um, we've been talking for six months, a year now. Yeah, somewhere like that. Right. And uh, we have varied interests, and uh, we had talked ourselves into doing a podcast because we believe there's a uh, availability in the marketplace that isn't being satisfied as far as... Yes, there's a lot of people not being satisfied. <laughs> We're going to work on that. we got to work We're going to work on that, America. Yes. Your satisfaction. Right. Right so, to you. I'm, I'm an attorney. I'm an accountant. I uh, have a real estate broker's license. I've done many things in my life. And uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, end of 50s, so I am uh, looking to... Uh, finalize my life uh, doing something creative so there you go there you go and joe so what brought you to michigan here recently? i'm homeless and that's the difference between you and me <laughs> right see i think i love it when people say you know i'm one of those guys I, I got all this stuff going on i'm just homeless i'm just a guy looking for a gig man. right spent some time in the police work about 30 years you know so got up to being captain in newport news then i became a chief in columbus i've we had my own radio show on the internet, which was interesting because nobody knew how to turn it on at the time. It was great. Um, and had a paper and did a bunch of things like that. But really, I want to get into doing some things that are creative. You know, I'm mm -hmm. almost 60. And this is where everybody says, you know, you look really good for being 60. And I thank you. I work out a lot, but you already knew that. Right. And that is what I'm here for. Gotcha. And um, so... What would you like to accomplish with this large building? To make enough money to eat. Yeah. I think that would be it. I think mm -hmm. that we all, you know, we all talk grandiose, right? It's right. like, you know what I'd really like to do? I'd like to change the world. Right. While I can raise enough money to eat. Gotcha. So if I can do that, gotcha. then there you go, because that's what I'm looking for. Gotcha. So I'm looking for that. So what we're trying to do basically is to come up with a bunch of creative people to do some kind of multimedia yes um, yes organization right and we plan to do music hopefully yes yes and video video that's actually correct we'll talk about that later right okay. and then uh, also we probably do some print media stuff Yes, I ran a paper. I ran a paper. So I, and you, I was, current, you currently also have Southern Gothic Creations. Yes, right? I have two websites. One is 40 Plus and Fit, which is about working out. And the other one is Southern Gothic, Southern Gothic Creations, which is actually an art site and a little opinion, though. I'm hoping to take the opinion and shift it over to another site. Gotcha. And the Southern Gothic, you, have, you do poetry. Poetry. I'm a poet. And you also write um, long form. Well, not too long form, but... Different articles, words. yes. Articles about you Stuff. wrote. You wrote one recently on the uh, Declaration of Independence. Right. It was. It was a brief one. It said, "Read the Declaration of Independence." <laughs> right. And it was a, it's more. It's actually not an article. It's really a right. suggestion. Right. Hidden as an article. Which is interesting because you found the only uh, one of the few versions that have what in it. 
the savage Indian clause. Oh, yeah. I like that. You know. Right. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's omitted from many. Days. Many, many that you have. Forget that. So, and I did a little research this morning on the Declaration of Independence, and I didn't realize that Thomas Jefferson had wrote a, wrote a flaming yes. uh, Declaration of Independence. They had to scale it back. They scaled back the slavery portion. Yes, they slaved. They they uh, scale back many things. <laughs> right. So anyway, we we digress to where we usually go. But um, so we're also uh, wanting to reach people that have no uh, news source. Right. Correct. Right. They, they, we're trying to get people real news, or at least give them better news than they're getting right now. Right. And I think be more honest about. It. So hopefully we can get into that. It'll be news and opinion. I think the difference between us will be we are not going to lie to you. Try not. We're going to give you news and opinion. No, we're not going to lie to you. We're going to give news and opinion. <laughs> right. I will never say I'm giving you opinion and then tell you it's that's a news true. net. That's true. That is okay, true. That's, that's that, the lie. A lot, of, a lot of opinion is out there. Right. It news. shouldn't be CNN, the cable news network. Right. It should be the cable opinion network, <laughs> which would be C-O-N, which would actually be more Con, be more appropriate. <laughs> right. That would be my guess. Right. And so, now that you're homeless. Yeah, that's living here at the studio. Right. But we need to build a team, correct? That's right. We got to have a team of people, preferably people that, you know, are creative. And similar thought in mind. And Yeah, I mean, somebody that's willing to work. I think we'd be nice if we get there. I mean... I, I think there's a lot of creative people out there. I think there's a lot of people that want to get involved. I think whether it's from doing interviews or, or talking to us or getting stuff, I think they're there. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of, of giving people an outlet. And I've said this since the beginning, if we mm -hmm. can give people an outlet, people will come. Right. And, you, and you've been here now for about a month and you, you moved here from Virginia. Yes. And so what is your feeling as far as the vibe that you're getting from the populace? I, I think you have great people here. I think that's one of the things I love. I mean, rather I'm driving around and I'm at the gym or I'm driving around and I'm dealing with people and just, you know, going to the convenience store. I think we have good people. I, I think this is definitely a good place for America. I think you can figure out a lot of what people feel in America by being in Michigan. I think there is a a sense that there's something wrong. And it isn't like like being mean about it. It's just something's not setting right. So right. I think that that's a big deal of what we can do. And I like to get people involved in that. And give us our, their opinion and be free to give us their opinion. Yeah, because I think, canceled. Yeah, because I think that is one of the things that are happening. I think people feel like they can't talk. Yeah. And so yeah, give them an outlet. Whether it's to write, talk, interview, or whatever we need them to do. Yeah. That's where we're heading. Yeah, I think that's good. And as far as the music side of things. Yes. What do you want to do with the music side? I would like the people would eventually, would, when we're, we talk about this building, it's a huge building, you might not be able to tell it from here, but I'd like to be able to start recording people. Yeah. I think it would be nice. I think it'd be, it'd be really good to get people and give them an opportunity to record, place to do it at. And, and as we grow towards that, that would be nice. And both of us wanted to be rock stars at one time. Well, we still do. We, no, I was going to say there <laughs> one time. I'm not sure what you're talking about. But, you know, <laughs> right. Yes, we have continued that dream. But we both were in garage bands from early ages. All That's right. We were in garage bands. But you've played with some talented people. Yes, I did. I, I mean, I played with, with people who have won Grammys. And mm -hmm. I want to hopefully we'll have Nate Beth on the air one day. And, right. You know, and some other people that we were involved in. So it's all been good. And I so, played with some people that. that yes, you you did you did do, do great things, and I was yeah. always fired though. That's right. Well, it happens. I always got fired. There's a lot of that going on. I'll just leave it at that. Right. A lot of that going on. <laughs> we were actually in a band, not together, but yeah, right, right sequentially. Right. So, yes, at the same, I, I, like kind of almost at the same time. Right. We were being fired at different moments. <laughs> is what I think happened. Right. But we'll have a whole episode on no, that. No, no. We'll have a whole episode on that disaster. So we have basically, we want to do audio video, mm -hmm. um, podcasts with the two average Joes, um, print media, and we're not sure how we're going to divvy out the our writing, but we had talked about doing books. Yeah, I would like to write. I'd like to write like yeah. that. I, I think there's a place for it. I think even though, I think the podcast would be strong, and I think that's what we want to work on, but I think there's still a place for print media. 
Well, there's also the, over, the interplay between you being a former police officer and me being a practicing attorney and the over, overlay or overlap of, yeah. like we, I have those cases, like I have the Gary Leiterman case. That, right, um, and Gary's got to be discussed. Yeah, and he is a, a gentleman who was convicted of a murder that occurred in 1969 based solely on DNA evidence. Mm -hmm. Well, I say solely. The prosecution would probably argue against that. But he died on the 4th of July just a couple of years ago after right. doing basically life in prison for something he didn't do. Yeah, and we really do need to address the Gary situation. And, and, other, and I yeah. think there's other people who have been mistreated by the yes. system, and I think we have to deal with that. Yeah, so we have what I believe is systemic failures in, the, in our judicial system, and you could uniquely address the uh, the... The police are taking a beating these days. Yeah, and some of it they've caused themselves, and some of it is just craziness where people are expecting them to do things that, you know, they don't do. I mean, they want things from us that we, we don't do. And I think some of it's politically motivated, and some things I think we, you know, police could have done a better job. And what was the comment you made about there's the police departments that you know of have, are more diverse than they've ever been? Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about it. I think that's the most interesting thing about law enforcement. If you turn on the news, we've never been under more attack than we are now. But we've never been more diverse. We have yeah. never been more diverse. In the history of America, right. police departments have never been more diverse than they are right now. Right. So we'll see how that turns out. When we'll do episodes on that. And we were talking last night about the 68 riot in, uh, in Chicago, about how yeah. that changed policing all over the country. Yeah, I mean, I think there's that place with the stuff that happened with the deep, just to, to put it in perspective, the, the Democratic National Convention in Chicago in 68, the reports that came out of that, right. ran reports and stuff like that, and just it just utterly changed police work. And then we went into ComStat and we started doing things more by numbers and mm -hmm. that's had a change, some good, some bad. So mm -hmm. those are big things that we can talk about. And then we've talked about constitutionality as far as stop, stop and frisk in New York City. when they Right, were well that, that was a big deal. That's the whole ComStat thing. Was so it? That, yeah, that's the big change. Were they doing that in Newport News too? Uh, we never did it like they did. <laughs> right. Never. Yeah, that pesky constitution. Ever. The pesky Never, ever, ever. There right. you go. Right, right, right. But some other people have. Right, right, right. So between the two of us with our vast experience and um, you're working with me in the law office and um, you're seeing the cases that I have and what comes in, and this is just I have a small practice in southwest Michigan. And it's just, it runs the gamut, but I seem to get these odd cases of right. the guy who did 11 years in prison for something he didn't do. And, right. And then Gary Leiterman, who did basically 12 years and he died in prison. Prison. And that case in both of them, I mean, we don't want to blow over them and be short on them today, but they're very right. big. And then we have the, uh, the attorney that was uh, arrested in Allegan for trespassing. Yes, yes, and we have her to deal with. Right. And talk so, to. so we have a litany of cases yeah. that and, we can discuss. And, and I think the things about some of the cases, you know, and there's limitations, you can't bring everybody in, especially in active cases, but... Yeah. You, you, we do want to start bringing people in. I don't think, you know, we call it two average Joes, but it don't want to just be us. You know, we do want to start yeah, bringing in people and, and letting people hear their stories. Right. Because there's a lot of going on and there's a lot of good going on. There's a lot of, of great things happening that are positive, but mm -hmm. the things that are not are not, not good at all. And they're really fixing it where I think people are more angry than they've ever been. You know, we go out and talk to people all the time, and I don't think people have ever been more angry than they are now. I agree Not in my you. adult life. I agree with you, too. Well, it's interesting. So we are in the, uh, it's on Thomas Street. This used to be a chiropractor's building. We, yes. I bought this table at a yard sale, and my maintenance guy stained it up really nicely. We got a free organ. It's our only p instrument in Same. this building so far. But, um, but and if you're only going to have one thing in the building, an <laughs> organ, <laughs> right, right. So, there so we, we plan that this will be the actual studio space. I don't know. Um, it's got about two acres. The property does, and it fronts two roads. Right. It's on a main drag. We're worried about the sound a little bit because trucks going by right, right here. But, but this is this is the zygote stage of, right. of our. And we got a chiropractor sign out. Yeah, we do have a chiropractor. So for that yeah. couple that stopped by on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to turn in the insurance stuff, but the blank check was probably cash. <laughs> right. What is leaving it at that? Right.
So anything else you want to add? Or we? No, I think that's it. I think that I think that we hope that people will will tune in. This is the beginning. We didn't want to get into too many topics. We didn't want to get into too many things. Right. But um, and I definitely don't want to because there's certain things that we talked about that are very very serious, and I don't want to just blow over them. So yeah. you know, it's best to just mention them. But hopefully, people will watch this. People who are creative and want to get involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would love to talk to veterans. I think they have a unique experience. They have a unique situation that they need to share. And I think that if we can do that, you know, bring in a creative team, bring in people who are willing to be interviewed. Because see, people will talk to you. We've talked about this before. They'll talk to you in the office. Then we say, hey, I'm going to write that. Or do you want to get on here? They're not so interested. So we have to look for people like that. And I think that this will make it unique. I don't think we're going to be... I think this is important. I don't think it's like you'll turn on our show Mm -hmm. and every day we're just rambling about the same thing and, and, you know, just railing against the same thing. Mm -hmm. I think there's enough stuff to be talked about. I think there's a part of this show that has to be about Michigan. I think there's interesting things that are happening in Michigan. Mm -hmm. I think the citizens here are a good example of people who want to make change. Mm-hmm. And I think some of their problems will resonate with anybody in America listening. And there appears to be a vacuum right now in leadership and in uh, yes. guidance as far as constitutionality and legality. Mm-hmm. I don't think that in Washington the best or brightest are serving <laughs> there anymore. Right. I'm pretty sure that right. some of them are there because they drew the shortest straw. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to address that too. I'd like to have some political people on here, but I'm not going to, I'm going to be honest with you, and I hope the people that are watching this will do it. I'd, I'd like to have political people on here, but I'm not interested in being a hack. Yeah. Like, I'm not interested in bringing you on just so you could yak your yackle, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I mean, I have a real discussion, yes. Yeah, yeah. But we're not here to hack. The, so. the, what, what I haven't found is where you could sit down with a liberal, and I guess you'd call us conservatives, right? With a, no, you know, with a small C. That's what they would call us. Right. You know, I mean, I'm comfortable with a big C. <laughs> and they right. would mean huge C, <laughs> followed by some other letters. <laughs> right. Right. You know. So, but it, it, we, we, sat, we sat with a liberal person last night who was intelligent and conscientious. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, I don't. And I, I don't, find that interesting. No, we're not going to humor that. I mean, I mean, really, if you come in here and you're like a communist sympathizer, I'm, I'm going to pretty much thrash you, and you can leave that in um, and clarify that. Right. right. You know, um, I I just think that there's a point where it would be. I, I do believe in listening to other people's opinion, but what I have found about other opi- people's opinion is name calling. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, See, that's, I, that's what people always say. You know, everybody's about love. Yeah. Everybody loves everybody. We got big signs say, you know, we got to love everybody. And they love everybody. Right until you walk in with that mega hat. There you go. And the then, mega hat, then probably they don't love you anymore. Right? Love you anymore. <laughs> right. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not hacking for anybody. Right. We will not be hacked. Well, right. and I don't want people yelling over each other, too, because you see, you watch CNN or whatever, or sometimes Fox News, and they're well, just this, screaming at each other. It's, it's pointless. Well, this is actually your building. You can put them out and take a trespass. Interestingly, so we, Joe and I, we started watching, what was it, 30 for 30 or whatever the hell that show was? Yeah. So there was a Mississippi State football. Mississippi, Ole Miss. Ole Miss? Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't make that, that mistake, don't make that mistake, mistake in Mississippi. That right. the old Miss Chuck <laughs> Mullins. Right. So Chucky Mullins was a was a beloved football player, and yes. he was uh, made into a quadriplegic. Mm-hmm. And they were they had Kentucky Fried Chicken buckets in the stands, and all these white people were. They gave what a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean just just passing a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Right, buckets. and and there was no the rate there was no racism. So we have more in common. Right. And we talk about it all the time that we are heading in the right path, but now we are diverted. They're right. saying that we're all divided because we're all racist and we're all yeah. homophobic and we're xenophobic and all this other yeah. stuff. And we're really not. I think when we didn't stop people from calling people names, because I do believe that, you know, put it on the line. that I think we have more in common than we don't. Yeah. But when we didn't stop people from calling people names. I think that was the big mistake. Right. And it kind of starts at at a personal level, like when you are having a discussion and, you know, you're talking about something and then 
somebody has to bring up a name, you know, you have to end it. That yeah. has to be, that's the end of you saying that to me. I mean, you're polite and you're pleasant and you're nice. Right. But you surely don't sit there and defend yourself and say you're not. See, I think that's where good natured people went wrong. Yeah. I'm talking, you're talking, you call me a name, and then I wind up trying to explain why I'm not. Right. Not important. You know what's important? You're not going to call me that name. And that's why people have to address. They see, if we had stopped, they said, oh, by the way, you're not calling me any names. Mm -hmm. I don't care why you think I'm that way. I'm not going to defend myself. Mm -hmm. You're just not calling me any names. People would have stopped keep calling people names. Right. But, but you know, Hillary should have learned that because huh? that was one of the reasons why Hillary lost, I believe. Yeah, I mean, you don't call people names. It's a deplorable thing. Right? Yeah, so yeah. So you call 50% I mean, of America deplorable. Well, yeah, you know, you just say, don't. You know, I think there's a lot of times we, we, we have a lot in common, but I also think we have this, this, this philosophical belief that we're going to be huge, that we're going to discuss things on the huge level. We're going to be really huge. And actually, everything is usually addressed on a personal level. Yeah, you've talked about it's more important for the local school board election yeah. than it is the president. Yeah, I mean, they're going to impact your children, and yeah. they're going to make gigantic decisions. And yeah, I'm there's, also... There's huge issues, huge issues coming down right now with the vaccines and what they're doing with the children and whether they're going to be able to go. I'm getting calls from potential clients about uh, in order to go to a college and be in the dormitories, they're, they're going to require that they have vaccines. And yeah. Seemed to be a personal choice to me, a medical choice. But. Right. Eh, not so much. But I just think it's that way. And I also think it's that way about whether or not you're going to accept it. I think we do have more in common. I do think Absolutely. that people are, 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 are genuinely okay. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also when you start seeing the name calling, it's like, that's it. That's yeah. it. And I don't care what name you call me. Right. And I'm not going to defend myself. Right. I think that's where people go crazy. You know, mm -hmm. they'll be like, you'll get called a name and you feel compelled to give some great example that you're not where well, all post, my friends are yeah but blank. but the answer really is you're not going to call me any names and that's the end of this discussion <laughs> right. right right that's the end of, we're not talking to me like that and if everybody had done that at the beginning instead yeah. of you know basically kowtowing and talking about how all their best friends are and and trying to give examples of why they're a wonderful person mm -hmm. if they had just said you're not calling me that name i'm not going to accept it and right. if everybody did that right you would be a lot better. It would it, end a lot. But we're in the cancel culture now. Yeah, that's all right because you're going to get canceled anyway. So if that's the case, you right. already know you're up against the wall. Right. Why are you going to entertain that? Right. right you know, right. I think it's at the end. And end of the day, by the way, you know, when somebody gets canceled and they're like famous, I mean, I don't know what to say because that's all just, you know, that's their own game. It's like, yeah. you know, like famous people. I'm looking at the camera. You don't want to know how they got famous. My dad used to tell me that, and I didn't believe that. You don't want to know how they got famous. So um, when they lose that, that's a whole other thing. But right. I think that people should fight for their jobs. Mm -hmm. I think if they're attacked on their jobs for believing right. things or right. something they post, I think they need to get attorneys. I mean, they need to battle them. Mm -hmm. They need to make sure that they do um, everything they can legally to protect their rights. And I think this show will discuss that yeah. without getting themselves in trouble. Yeah, I find stupid. it interesting that, remember Bill, Bill Maher, he... He was addressing that they've gone too far with it. Yeah, yeah. When I'm agreeing with him, then yeah. they're, they're... And then, then John Stewart on the uh, Colbert show. That, yeah, yeah. When I'm, when I'm agreeing with those two, we... Yeah, we, look that up on the COVID thing. It's yeah. definitely hilarious. Yeah, so, yeah. Those are the kind of things that we got. But I do think that all in all, that, that everybody wants to live a good life. Well, they want to take care of their children. They want to live a good life in a safe neighborhood. I mean, everybody. Yeah, be in the jobs, take care of themselves. I just think that, I think that we need to focus on that. But when we are battled out, you know. We're lost in the weeds. Yeah, yeah. I think that um, I, I would, like I said, you know, I'll, I'm not even going to get into famous people because that's a whole other, you know, I stand by what I say. <laughs> right. Okay. So I don't think, you know, that one I'm going to address. But as far as like when people are being attacked at work, we don't want them to do anything wrong. We don't want them to overstate themselves. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you need to look at where your legal rights are. You know, what's happening, you know, and you shouldn't just roll over. You know, everybody has rights. Know them. Yeah. Know them. Assert them. Yeah. And that's what we, we have to do. Right. So hopefully that's what will occur. So to bring it on home, um, it's our goal to build a creative team, and then put out different multimedia projects, mm -hmm. music-wise, video-wise. In our, in our podcast. Print, and, print podcast, yeah. And, and be honest. 
and be and be assertive and hopefully entertaining while we're doing it give it a shot because if we can't do that I, I, no one's gonna lie <laughs> right so there we go and with that we're gonna say goodbye say goodbye robert goodbye robert, robert. jeff goodbye <laughs>